Yo, what is up you guys? It's Dominator here and one thing I really love about the Pokemon franchise is being able to find shiny Pokemon. Shiny Pokemon are rare versions of Pokemon that are a different color than usual. Originally, shiny Pokemon had a 1 in 8,192 chance of appearing, but as the years have gone on and more entries to the franchise have come out, there have been many new ways to increase your shiny chances and encounter shiny Pokemon. Today I'll be teaching you how you can find shiny Pokemon and expand your shiny collection. Before we begin, there are a few things I want to go over. This video will be explaining the many ways you can find shiny Pokemon across each main series game. I will not be discussing how to specifically shiny hunt every Pokemon, as if I did, we'd be here all day. I will, however, highlight certain specific hunts that I think are noteworthy and unique compared to every other hunt. I will also not be including Scarlet and Violet in this video. At the time of making this video, and possibly even at the time of posting this video, Scarlet and Violet have not been released. I wanted to hold off at first and include those games right away, but after thinking about it, I would rather not try to get the info out as quickly as possible with the risk of being incorrect on the methods and spreading misinformation, as we have been wrong in the past about certain methods until even years later. <laughs> Brilliant Pokemon and let's go combos. But once I am confident we know for sure how these newer methods work in Scarlet and Violet, I will definitely make a separate video on those games, so stay tuned for that. Also, if this video helps you out in any way, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel if you are new, as I do many more informative shiny hunting videos as long as shiny reactions on my channel. There are a lot of tools you can use to track down the specific shiny Pokemon you want the most. Cerebi along with Bulbapedia are great sites that I personally use while looking up where certain Pokemon appear and how likely they are to find. I will leave both of these sites linked in the description of this video. Along with that, if you have a Windows PC, there is a great tool that can help you calculate the encounter rate of Pokemon depending on the game, route, time of day, special ability you are using, and if you're using a repel trick. If you lead your party with a Pokemon with a certain ability, it can alter what Pokemon you see while hunting. For example, leading with a Pokemon with the ability Static will greatly increase your chances of finding electric type Pokemon in the wild. This however only works with Pokemon Emerald along with the Generation 4 games and onward. I will also leave a link to the page that lists every ability that you can use outside of battle that alters encounter rate of certain Pokemon. Repels work in a way that prevents encounters with Pokemon that are lower level than the Pokemon you are leading with in your party. So if you lead with a Pokemon that is a specific level, you can repel out the lower level Pokemon, which in turn will increase the encounter rate of the higher level Pokemon, which is commonly referred to as Repel Trick. This tool calculates the new encounter rates of Pokemon when using special abilities or Repel Tricks. I will leave a download link to this tool in the description of this video. Do know there will be a lot of links in the description of this video, so make sure you check if you have questions about anything and want reassurance, or also just comment below if you have any questions about any of these methods that I'm talking about, or any more details you think you would need with shiny hunting. Also note that because we're dealing with shiny hunting methods in every single generation of Pokemon, this video will be extremely long. However, if you're trying to hunt in a specific generation of Pokemon, I will leave timestamps in the video so you can skip to whatever generation you want to hunt in so you don't have to watch every single generation of this video. <laughs> With all that said, let's get right into this. We're going to start all the way back in the Generation 1 games. Now you may be wondering, how can you get shiny Pokemon in Generation 1 if shiny Pokemon don't even exist? Well, shiny Pokemon don't technically exist in Generation 1, but you can still actually get them with how the way shiny value is determined in Generation 2. In Generation 2, shiny value is determined based on the stats of the Pokemon. All Pokemon are generated with a hidden stat value that help determine what its total stats are going to be. These stats are called individual values or IVs. In generation 3 and onward, IVs can range from 0 to 31 for each stat, but in generation 1 and 2, they only range from 0 to 15 and are also called determinant values or DVs. But to keep things consistent, I'm just going to refer to them as IVs from here on out. Shiny value in Generation 2 is determined if you have a specific set of IVs for your Pokemon. These are the IVs that you need. Because Generation 1 shares the same system of IVs that Generation 2 does, if you get a Pokemon with the correct shiny stats in Generation 1 and then send it into a Generation 2 game, it will result in a shiny. Along with this, if you're playing on a Generation 1 game on the 3DS Virtual Console, you can send those Pokemon into Pokemon Bank and they will also result in a shiny Pokemon. Now obviously with different Pokemon you are using, their IVs can result in different stat points. The best way to check the stats for the shiny value is to plug in the Pokemon you're hunting for and see what the stats result in the correct IVs. I will leave a calculator for this in the description. However, since this calculator is a generation two stat calculator, the special stats in generation one is split between special attack and special defense. What you'd wanna do is essentially look up the base stats of the Pokemon you're hunting for, 
in Generation 1 and Generation 2, and whatever stat from Generation 2, whether it's Special Attack or Special Defense, whatever one of those stats matches up with the Special Stat from Generation 1, that's the stat you're going to want to figure out what value it needs to be for the Shiny. The HP stat is also determined by the other stats, so since you need your HP stat to be either 0 or 8, and it is affected by the other stats, if the HP stat is neither 0 or 8, it cannot be a shiny Pokemon. This can make for checking shinies a bit quicker due to not needing to check all the stats every time if the HP stat is already incorrect. Most Pokemon, you will not be able to tell for sure if they are shiny until they are at least level 50. The best way to level up a Pokemon to check its stats is to use the famous Missing No Glitch to duplicate rare candies and use these to level up your Pokemon to level 50 without having to worry about effort values altering the stats. To do the Missing No Glitch, simply put an item you wish to duplicate in the 6th slot of your bag, in this case we want to do rare candies, then go to Viridian City and talk to the old man and have him show you how to catch a Pokemon. After you finish watching the catching tutorial, fly to Cinnabar Island, and from there, surf on the column of tiles that is directly to the right of the island until you encounter a Pokemon. It should be some variant of Missing No. Sometimes it's not always Missing No. It won't work if you encounter a normal Pokemon, so just keep running away until you encounter Missing No. After you encounter Missing No, it's really simple, just run away again. After that, your sixth item slot will be duplicated. So now that you know what IVs are needed to result in a shiny Pokemon, and having tons of rare candies to level up that Pokemon in order to accurately read what IVs it has, you should be ready to shiny hunt now. However, in Generation 1, due to the limited memory capacity in the Game Boy original games, only gift Pokemon, static encounters, or fishing encounters can be shiny. It cannot generate the correct stats if it is a wild grass encounter or in a cave or anything else other than gift Pokemon, static encounters, or fishing encounters. Static encounters being like the legendaries, for instance. You stand in front of them and you simply encounter them and soft reset. The odds of these shinies are always 1 in 8,192, which even though it sounds rough, these Gen 1 hunts are kind of a novelty and something I would always recommend you try at least once. I actually did this once with a shiny Dratini and I thought it was really cool, so if you want to check out that video, I'll leave a card on screen now for that. Generation 2. Moving forward, starting with Generation 2, Gold, Silver, and Crystal, when Shinies were actually introduced, we have two main ways to encounter Shinies, Random Encounters and Soft Resets. Random Encounters are the simple act of walking around in an area where you can encounter Pokemon and just doing that until you get a Shiny. Soft Resets are when you encounter a Pokemon and Soft Reset the game using a specific button combination. In these games, it's A, B, Start, and Select. If you press those all at once, it'll soft reset the game. And these are typically used when you can only obtain one of a certain Pokemon during a save file, like, for example, the starters or the legendaries. But the list expands way past that, and there's many others. As these methods for obtaining shinies are present in every game moving forward, I will not mention them in later games unless there is something new to be said about them. One thing to note specifically about soft resets is that due to the way shiny value is determined based off of the DVs of the Pokemon or IVs, you cannot get a shiny Pokemon that is female for any Pokemon that has a 1 in 8 gender ratio for female. These Pokemon are the Starters, Eevee, and Snorlax. Other Pokemon that have these 1 in 8 gender ratio for a female, you can't encounter in these games without breeding, so we don't have to worry about those. So to make the resets a little faster, you can select to give a nickname to the Pokemon, and if the gender appears as a female, you don't even have to check if it's shiny, you can just soft reset over it. Also, like Generation 1, since the HP stat is determined by the other stats, if the HP stat is not correct, it will never be shiny, so this can make resets a little faster if you are doing a hunt where you need to check the Pokemon's summary screen. So you can encounter Pokemon and soft reset Pokemon to get yourself a 1 in 8,192 chance to obtain a shiny, but are there any ways to increase your shiny chance? Actually, yes. To start with the obvious one, in the Lake of Rage, as part of the story, you encounter a Gyarados that is guaranteed to be shiny. This will make another method significantly easier to start up. In Pokemon Crystal only, when you go to the daycare for the first time, the old man inside will gift you an odd egg. Before talking to him the first time, save in front of him, and then when you talk to him, he will give you the egg. The odd egg can get you one of the baby Pokemon from Generation 2, excluding Togepi, but the cool part about this egg is that it has a really high chance of hatching a shiny. The odds are as follows. You have a 1% chance to hatch a shiny Pichu, a 3% chance to hatch a shiny Cleffa, 3% chance to hatch a shiny Iglybuff, 1% chance to hatch a shiny Tyrogue, 2% chance to hatch a shiny Smoochum, 2% chance to hatch a shiny Elekid, and a 2% chance to hatch a shiny Magby. For a grand total of 14%, or a 1 in 7.14 chance to hatch a shiny from it. A lot better than the standard 1 in 8192 chance. 
Speaking of eggs, in Generation 2, the breeding mechanic was added, and because of the way parent Pokemon pass down the IVs to the offspring, you can use shiny Pokemon to pass down shiny IVs to give yourself an increased chance to hatch a shiny. The reason why you want the Lake of Rage Gyarados is because only the female parent can result in the Pokemon you hatch. So you can match that Gyarados up with a female Pokemon that's in the same egg group to hatch a new shiny. The odds of this are about 1 in 128 for a shiny, and even though that sounds insanely easy, Breeding in Generation 2 is extremely tedious. It takes a very long time, not only to collect eggs from the daycare, but also to hatch them. So even with the way higher shiny odds, you would probably be better off breeding for shinies in later games anyway. For more information on this method, I will leave a full in-depth tutorial on breeding in Generation 2 I found from Pokemon Cast in the description. They explain the breeding mechanics in way more detail, so if you really want to tackle breeding in Generation 2, I highly recommend you watch that video. One more thing about breeding in Generation 2 is that if you use a shiny Ditto to breed as one of the parent Pokemon, you no longer have to worry about gender nor egg groups and can breed shinies of nearly any Pokemon. On top of that, the shiny odds go from a 1 in 128 to a 1 in 64 shiny chance. Shiny Ditto is pretty difficult to obtain though, but with a glitch present in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, you can guarantee a Shiny Ditto using the Lake of Rage Gyarados you obtained in Gold, Silver, Crystal. I will leave a tutorial by Superblot in the description as well, as they explain the steps to get the Shiny Ditto much better than I'd be able to. Generation 3 Generation 3 is a unique generation because it doesn't have any shiny hunting methods. Every Pokemon is always going to be the base 1 in 8,192 shiny odds, with a couple of exceptions. These exceptions, as far as I'm aware, are the Wishmaker Jirachi from the Pokemon Colosseum bonus disc, which instead of a 1 in 8,192 chance, it has roughly a 1 in 7,281 chance to be shiny, and also the various unknown letters from Fire Red and Leaf Green. The shiny odds of these vary depending on the trainer, but can be as high as a 1 in 5,120 chance, all the way as low as to a 1 in 18,432 chance to find a shiny one. My friend Professor Rex has an in-depth guide on how the shiny odds for unknown work in Fire Red Leaf Green, so check out his video if you plan to hunt some of the letters, as well as everything else, link in the description of this video. Even though there's no shiny hunting methods in these games, this is still my favorite generation to shiny hunt in, specifically in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Why do I enjoy shiny hunting so much, despite the fact that the shiny odds are always 1 in 8,192 chance, and there's no methods to increase your shiny odds? Well, let me explain. In Generation 3, abilities were introduced, and there's an ability that increases the encounter rate of Pokemon in the wild. This ability is Illuminate, and I will list every Pokemon on screen now that can get the ability Illuminate. Do note that Arena Trap and No Guard also share the same effect as Illuminate, so I guess I'll list all those Pokemon that can get those abilities as well. However, Illuminate works in every Generation 3 game to increase your encounter rate, and Arena Trap only works in Pokemon Emerald or the Generation 4 games and onward. Also with No Guard, I'm unsure if it works in Fire Red Leaf Green or Ruby and Sapphire, but out of battle effects for abilities didn't start working until Pokemon Emerald, and No Guard has a primary use in battle, however I haven't seen any sort that say it doesn't work in Fire Red Leaf Green or Ruby Sapphire, so I'm actually completely unsure about that one. Regardless, if you're unsure about it, I would just stick to Illuminate. Illuminate's pretty easy to get anyway, and it works in all of the Generation 3 games no matter what. And in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, there's an item called the White Flute, which also, when you use it, increases your encounter rate. In order to get the White Flute, all you have to do is go to Route 113, which is the area with all the ash covering the grass patches, and once you go into the building and talk to the man inside, he'll give you a soot sack, then you just have to walk around in all the ash until you get enough, and he will craft you a White Flute. In Generation 3, especially in Fire Red and Leaf Green, the encounter rate is extremely fast, especially paired with the White Flute and Illuminate, which do stack. The encounter rate is so extremely fast that even with really low shiny odds, I'm still able to get shinies way quicker than I were to be using the shiny charm in a game like Sun and Moon or Sword and Shield. Plus, it's really cool seeing shiny Pokemon in the older games as well. One thing to note is that if you're hunting on Ruby and Sapphire with a dead internal battery, or you're hunting on Emerald at all, the way shininess is determined is a little different. The easiest way to explain it is that shiny value is determined by the frames of the game, and the game runs at 60 frames per second, and the odds of a frame yielding a shiny Pokemon is the same 1 in 8,192 chance. However, unlike Ruby and Sapphire with working batteries and Fire on Leaf Green, 
The frames you get are not completely randomized and will reset back to zero every time you soft reset or turn your game off. You can still get shinies nearly the same way as any other Pokemon game, but soft reset hunts are nearly impossible to complete because you will just be seeing the same non-shiny frames over and over again. In the description, I will link Shiny Collector's video explaining Emerald's broken RNG as he goes way more in depth on how it works and what you should know before tackling shiny hunting in Emerald, or Ruby Sapphire if you have a dead internal battery. However, if you replace the battery in Ruby and Sapphire, it fixes the issue, but in Emerald, unfortunately, there is no way to fix this. There is, however, a slight workaround to this. If you go to the battle tower and compete in a battle and record the battle video after the battle is completed, if you view your battle video that you've recorded, it will advance the frames to the frame that the battle had started at. This means that you could do a few soft resets, and then after you don't get a shiny, advance your frames to later frames after you recorded the battle video and you can get more new frames for soft resetting. However, it's ideal that you only really want to do about 50 or so soft resets between battle video recordings. So it can make soft resets a lot more tedious, and on top of this, most soft reset hunts that you would normally do in Emerald, you can do runaways for, where you simply run away from the Pokemon, exit and enter the area again, and you can re-encounter them. So in most cases, it's not really worth it to do soft resets in Emerald anyway, even if there is this workaround, in my opinion. You'd be better off soft resetting for, say, Legend in Ruby Sapphire or in other games, or if you want to do them in Emerald, just do the runaways for them. You would only really want to do this method if Emerald was your only copy and there were no way to do runaways for the Pokemon. For example, the Johto starters that you receive after completing the Hoenn decks. Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. These Pokemon games are unique as they are kind of like a mix between main series and spin-off Pokemon games, but you can also trade between the Gen 3 GBA games, so finding shinies in them means you can still add them to your total collection and they won't be stuck in the GameCube for all eternity. However, shiny hunting in these games are quite difficult. In Pokemon Coliseum, the only Pokemon that can be shiny are the shadow Pokemon that you snag from other trainers. On top of this is that you will not know if they are shiny until after successfully catching them and checking them in your party or sending them out into battle. This alone makes for an extremely long and tedious shiny hunt, especially given that they are the base 1 in 8,192 odds and cannot be altered. One very common rumor slash misconception about these shadow shinies is that upon purifying them, they will lose their shininess. I'm not sure how this rumor came to be or how it became so well known, but this is in fact false. There is no evidence to suggest that purifying a shadow shiny will turn it into a non-shiny. Along with this, there's a lot of evidence showing that purifying them keeps them shiny as there are many shiny hunters who have successfully hunted and purified shadow shinies from Colosseum and even posted them to YouTube, so I'd recommend you give those videos a watch. Just search like shiny shadow Colosseum or something like that on YouTube, I don't know. For Pokemon XD, shiny hunting is pretty much the complete opposite of Colosseum. You can hunt pretty much any Pokemon in XD except for the shadow Pokemon. These Pokemon include your starter Eevee, the Johto starters you receive at the end of Mount Battle, the NPC traded Pokemon, and all the Pokespot Pokemon. Speed Twister 96 actually has successfully hunted every Pokemon from XD and has a full compilation of the shinies they got, so I would really recommend checking that out. I will leave their video linked in the description. Even though there aren't too many Pokemon to hunt in XD, they are all extremely tedious hunts due to the very long soft reset time that XD has. Be aware when hunting these Pokemon. Generation 4. Much like Generation 3, you can really speed up the encounter rate in the Generation 4 Pokemon games using the ability Illuminate and the White Flute item. The only way to find the White Flute in the Generation 4 games is at the Valor Lake front in Platinum version only, or on Route 47 in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. However, if you only have Diamond or Pearl, you can still obtain the White Flute by first getting them in Ruby Sapphire Emerald then migrate a Pokemon that is holding the White Flute up from one of those games to a Generation 4 game using the DS system and Palpar. This does also work with Platinum and HeartGold SoulSilver. Also, starting in this generation, the soft reset button combination has been changed to LR Start and Select. Along with this, while using the White Flute and Illuminate to encounter Pokemon rather quickly, you can also force double battles if you have a partner NPC with you. These NPCs are Cheryl upon your first visit to Eterna Forest, Mira who you can escort through Wayward Cave, Riley who is training on Iron Island, Buck while going through Stark Mountain, and Marley in the post-game area of Victory Road. 
As long as you do not successfully escort them through the respective areas, you can pair up with them and get double the amount of encounters while shiny hunting. Just be sure to bring a Pokemon that can easily knock out their Pokemon so they don't KO the shiny. Only Mira locks you into staying with her until you get her out of Wayward Cave, so you have to be prepared to shiny hunt if you want to use her. Generation 4 is also known as the first generation to officially introduce shiny hunting methods to increase your shiny odds. Even though Generation 2 had the breeding mechanic, that was only really a side effect with how breeding and stat distribution worked. The two methods that were introduced in this generation were Masuda Method and Pokey Radar Chaining. Masuda Method is when you breed two Pokemon together that were caught in different regions. And no, I'm not talking about Johto to Sinnoh, I'm talking about real life regions, like in the United States to Japan. However, this method is a bit lenient, and instead of really different regions, it is actually only looking for different language Pokemon. For example, I could catch a Ditto in my own Japanese version of Pearl and breed it with my own Pokemon that were caught in my English copy. That will allow the Masuda method to work. In order to check if you have a foreign Pokemon in the Sinnoh games, you need to first go to Route 226 where there's a house with a hiker in it. If you talk to him, he'll upgrade your Pokedex in order to view foreign language Pokemon dex entries. After this, you'll be able to see if you have a foreign Pokemon of a certain species if its dex entry has the different language options. And from there, you just have to know which Pokemon is the one that caused the dex entry to occur. Here's an example with my Spanish Zigzagoon I got for my Spanish copy of Emerald. However, Generation 4 is specifically the worst generation to Masuda Method in, as eggs take a while to hatch and the odds only go to a 1 in 1638 chance. I would recommend if you want to tackle Masuda Method, I would go to the Alola games, specifically Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and also Sword and Shield. The shiny odds are 1 in 683 or 1 in 512 if you have the shiny charm, and eggs are much faster to hatch. The next method is Pokey Radar Chaining. This method is quite complex, but if done correctly, can be used to farm shinies relatively quickly. Because this method is complex to explain, let me just show you how it works. So in this part, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Pokey Radar. Now, the Pokey Radar is an item you get after seeing every Pokemon in Sinnoh, and then you talk to Professor Rowan. I believe either Professor Rowan or Professor Oak gives you the Pokey Radar once you do that, and then you can Pokey Radar chain. So what you're going to want to need is one, the Pokey Radar. So I have the Pokey Radar right here set to Y. You're going to want to set that to Y so you don't have to reuse it every single time. And you're going to want a lot of max repels or just any repels. But I prefer max repels because even though super repels are technically cheaper per the amount of steps you get compared to max repels, you still have to reapply them a lot more frequently. So it can get old and you're going to have to reapply repels quite often anyway, so might as well limit the amount we have to do. So I'm gonna use lots of max repels. Depending on what you're going for, you're gonna want a specific setup for Pokemon in order to catch them quite easily. I'm going for a rather easy Pokemon, so I don't really have to worry about struggling to catch them, but you do want to catch them over KOing them because you have a higher chance of keeping your chain if you catch them. And you're gonna want a lot of Pokeballs. Uh, I would recommend either Quick Balls, Dusk Balls, or Repeat Balls because those are gonna be the best options for comboing and catching your Pokemon a lot more quickly. Dust Balls obviously only at night and then Quick Ball on the first turn. And one more thing you're gonna want is this Poke Etch app. I believe it is app number 20. And you get this from Professor Oak when you visit Pal Park for the first time and it keeps track of your current chain and what your top three chains are. So as you can see, I have a 41 chain of Smeargle, a 42 chain of Nidoran Male, and a 41 chain of Starly. Um, I've comboed all of those to get shinies and it has been successful. And you're gonna wanna find an area with a large patch of grass like so. This is probably one of the easiest areas to do it in. I'm also going to be going for Shinx as Shinx has a really high encounter rate. And on top of that, I am leading with a Pokemon with the ability Static, which will cause Shinx to be about a 65% encounter rate every time, as opposed to, I think it's normally 30. So Shinx is going to be really common, and it's easier to combo for Pokemon that are a lot more common, because if you quote-unquote break the chain, you still could technically keep it intact if you just randomly encounter the same Pokemon that you're going for. So that's always a plus. It's always recommended you go for easier Pokemon that are higher encounter rates. And if you want more of a challenge, then go for the more rare Pokemon, like the 5% or the 1% or whatnot. So what you're gonna wanna do is a, apply a repel, which I already have a repel applied. You're gonna want to save your game. So let's do that. 
and then you're simply gonna wanna run the Pokey Radar. So let me run the Pokey Radar. And as you can see, there were two types of grass. In this case, I think I'm gonna be going for the lower shaking grass, not the more aggressive shaking grass. Um, if you pick a type of grass to start with, you're going to want to stick with that type of grass. So even if you get the correct patches that you want to run into in terms of distance and placement, if they are not the same type of patch that you initially started with, you have a really high chance of breaking your chain. So I'm just going to encounter one of these patches that was over here. And hopefully we get a Shinx. And we did get a Shinx, so Shinx has been started. What we're going to want to do is chuck a quick ball at this. And once we catch the Shinx, it's going to start our combo. And after I hit no on nicknaming the Shinx, you're going to see that more Pokey Radar patches are going to show up. And I'm going to explain how you're going to want to keep your chain going. All right, so we had a few patches show up around us. I'm going to quickly take a freeze frame of that and show you what we're going to want to go for. So there's multiple rings of patches around you. The ones that are one step away from you are the one away patches. The ones that are two steps away from you are the two away patches, so on and so forth until there's four patches away. So you go, you're going to want to encounter the four away patches. The reason for this is because if you encounter a patch that is only one away, it has a 28% chance of keeping your chain. So very unlikely that you keep your chain going. If you go to patches that are two away, it's a 48% chance to keep your chain. So significantly higher, but still not very likely to keep your chain. If you go to patches that are three away, it has a 68% chance to keep your chain. And if you go to patches that are four away, which is the ideal ones, you're gonna have an 88% chance to keep your chain. Now, that's if you KO the Pokemon. If you catch the Pokemon, you get an additional 10% bonus to keep your chain. So you'll have a 38%, a 48%, a 78%, and a 98% respectively. So if you continue to catch every Pokemon at a four away patch, assuming it is the same kind of patch you have been encountering before, you have a 98% chance to keep your chain. And on top of that, if you hit the 2% chance that your chain breaks, you still go off of the random encounter table that the patch of grass normally has. So with my static trying to encounter Shinx, as Shinx is the only electric type here and static increases electric types, I still have a 65% chance to keep Shinx and keep my chain going even if I hit the 2%, which is why I believe Shinx is probably one of the easiest Pokemon to Poke Radar to start with. So I would highly recommend it, especially in this patch of grass. You're going to find lots of patches that are four away. So there was one, I believe, up here. Two, three, four. And this should keep our chain. Again, we're going to try to stick with the not-so-aggressive shaking grass. And we're going to keep our chain going. Now, there's a few things I'm going to explain as I continue. But ideally, you're going to want to keep going until your chain hits a max of 40. Once you hit a max of 40, you will have the max shiny odds for a shiny patch to appear. Now, a shiny patch can appear at any time, but it is very unlikely until you hit a higher chain, and it maxes out a chain of 40. But a shiny patch will guarantee a shiny Pokemon, which is what we're going for. If you encounter a shiny Pokemon in a non-shiny patch, it is a full odd shiny. And if you encounter a shiny patch at a zero chain, that is also full odds, which is kind of crazy. But here is our second Shinx. And when the Poke Radar is going to go again. And I believe we do not have one that's four away. And there, as you notice, there was a patch right there. You want to always avoid the patches that are on the edge of the of the entire larger patch. You never want to encounter those because there's a chance that the Pokey Radar could just cancel altogether on the next encounter and just say their grass remains silent. And that'll automatically break your chain. Now, the other ways to break your chain are one, obviously, if you encounter the wrong Pokemon. Two, if you encounter a random Pokemon that's not part of the Pokey Radar patches, so that's why we use the repels. Three, if you leave the area and get too far away from the patches, I believe it's if you have the shaking patches go off screen, it'll break your chain. So even in the same patch of grass, it could still potentially break your chain. So always try to remain somewhat close to the patches that you saw. And four, if you either soft reset or turn off your game. So if you hit a chain of 40, there's no reason to save because if you reset your game after breaking your chain, it'll keep your chain to zero anyway. So 
the ideal method is to save before you start the chain. That way, you, if you break your chain, you don't have to waste all of your quick balls or repels. But we didn't get a good patch, so we are going to walk until our Pokey Radar refreshes and going to try again. What's nice about this patch is that this patch is so large that we have a really high chance of getting ones that are four away. And there's one that's four away over here. So we can go, and it's the same type of patch, so we can encounter that, and that should keep our chain going. And it's not against an edge patch, so we don't have to risk it. And we're going to catch this one for the maximum chance to keep our chain going. So we got that Shinx. Alright, I believe this one's four away as well, so that one's good. I have heard um, different scenarios. People have different opinions on the matter, but uh, a lot of people think that maybe if you encounter a patch that's like directly on the same axis as you, either the X or Y axis, or even on the correct diagonals, it has a high chance of, bre of breaking your chain. I don't think there's any factual evidence towards that. I don't think there's any confirmation. I think all you want to do is just get your patch four away, and that's all that matters as long as it's not an edge patch. There's always a random chance that your chain can break, so it could just be superstition, but I don't think there's any confirmed evidence to suggest that going in specific patches have higher chances of break your, breaking your chain unless they are the wrong type of patch or on an edge or three, two, or one away as opposed to four. So who knows, but this one should be good as it was four away and not an aggressive shaking patch. And there we have another Shinx. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we get to 40. So I'll probably speed this up because this could take a while. And if you're ever unsure if a patch is in the correct spot or on an edge or whatnot, your best bet is to just avoid it. If you are unsure, just stay, be patient about it because if you try to rush it, you'll end up breaking your chain and be at it for a lot longer. But if you do everything correctly, you have a pretty low chance of breaking your chain. It is still there but you have a pretty solid chance at getting to the chain of 40, so. And over here, this one is allegedly a bad patch, but I don't think there's any evidence to suggest that's actually true, so we're gonna encounter it anyway, and we still get a Shinx. So take that as you will. If you believe that going off of the direct axis that you're standing on or the diagonals, then avoid them if you're unsure, but I'm gonna go on a limb and say there's no difference in the odds of encountering your Pokemon when Poke Radar chaining those ones. And this one over here is obviously four away, so we're gonna encounter that one as well. There's another Shinx. One, two, three, four. So this one right here should be good. Um, as you can see at the bottom screen, it is keeping track, uh, pardon the glare, but it is keeping track that I am currently at a six chain of Shinx. So that's what you wanna look out for. Also, if you do break the chain before the encounter happens all the way, you'll notice the Pokemon at the top disappears. So if you wanna keep the suspense going, then just don't look at that or cover up the screen, but it is a good tool to know if you break your chain and to keep track of your chain, what you're at. But it is ultimately not required because you can obviously just keep a tally of what chain you're at. And we did not get any good patches here, so we're just gonna run the radar again. Uh, none of those are good as well. Another tip is that, say you run the radar and there's a patch that's four away above you that you want to hit, never directly go up like this, as I just did, because your character could cover up a patch that has a Pokemon in it and you just won't be able to see it. So it's always best to avoid the patch directly above you because if you encounter it, there is a very high chance that it will break your chain as it'll only be a 28 to 30% chance to keep it. Two, three, one, two, three, four. So this one should be good. There's another Shinx. One, two, three, four. So this is one that was directly above us and a lot of people believe that these could break your chain. Let's see. It did not. So I, I do think it's just random chance. People kind of assume chains break at certain patches because they just happens to be the RNG they get. 
because again, uh, going off of sources, there isn't really any evidence to suggest that is a thing. So um, it also is definitely not a thing in later installments with the Pokey Radar, say X and Y and Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. So I can't imagine why that would be a thing in these games as well. But these games, they don't really tell us too much about this. It's just people having to figure out these methods. One, two, oh, and our power off. One, two, three, four. So this one should be good. There's another Shinx. Again, always avoiding those edge patches because we don't want our Pokey Radar to just remain silent when we go to run it the next time as obviously it'll automatically run it after I catch the Shinx. All right, there's one that's four away, but it's on an edge patch, so we're gonna avoid that, so there's that. Another thing is, um, according to Bulbapedia, I actually got this info off of Bulbapedia, the aggressive shaking grass are the ones that include the Poke Radar exclusive Pokemon. So if you're going for a Pokemon that is exclusive to the Poke Radar, like for example, I have the Nidoran male down there. Normally that does not appear on Route 201 without the Poke Radar. So you want to encounter the aggressive shaking grass for those ones. For a Pokemon like Shinx, it's ideal to encounter the not so aggressive shaking grass like I am because it will exclude the Pokemon that are Poke Radar exclusive, giving you a higher chance of encountering the Pokemon you're going for. All right, so this one down here should be good. So that's just a helpful tip as to what you want to go for, what kind of grass you should encounter. It depends on what's Pokey Radar exclusive and what's not, essentially, if you want to maximize your odds. I'm unsure if that one, because it's on a corner, counts as an edge, but we aren't going to risk it. So um, if you ever experience something like that, where technically it's not really touching the edge, but... I would still probably consider that the edge patch, I would avoid that. Even though that was a four away patch, we're gonna avoid that one. All right, one, two, three, four, this one should be good. There we go, another Shanks. One, two, three, four, this one should also be good. It's always great when you get two in a row, makes it so much faster. Getting a little street going, it just makes them fly by. But there could be times where you just don't get a good patch for a very long time, and it could take a while. So you always got to be patient. It is shiny hunting, even though this method has extremely high shiny odds and isn't necessarily that time consuming to perform. You could get unlucky and have it take very long. All right, I want to say this one's kind of risky because of how close it is to the... Oh! And there we go, our chain broke. So, uh... I was going to say it's risky, not because of the placement of the patch in terms of distance, um... But because of... In fact, that was actually a perfect patch. This was just bad luck. But uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to keep our chain in case the radar just remained silent after because we were kind of close to the edge. But, uh, well... We broke our chain. That was 45 minutes of unsuccessful attempts, but uh, because of how quickly I got that chain up, 45 minutes seems slow, but I was uh, over explaining everything. But uh, we're going to just reset our game and we're going to try again. I'm going to very quickly speed this up so that this doesn't last super long. So I'm going to start a new chain and we're going to try to get Shinx again. All right, if this one does not break our chain, we should be at a chain of 40. So hopefully we don't get really unlucky with it. And there we go, we got our Shinx. So we are at a chain of 40. Now at this point, every shiny or every grass patch that shakes has the maximum shiny chance of one in 200. And what you're gonna wanna do is instead of continuing chaining and getting more Shinx, you're going to want to just avoid every single patch unless it's a shiny patch and just keep running the repel after 50 or so steps or the pokey raid around the repel. You'll have to keep running repels, obviously, but let's catch this one. Um, this one took me 37 minutes to get because I was going a little faster with it and uh, was not really explaining anything. 
Now we have the maximum chance at a shiny patch. So at this point, you're gonna want to just keep doing this over and over again and avoiding everything as if none of the patches are good. And you're just gonna wanna keep doing this until a shiny patch appears. Um, quick note is that if a shiny patch does appear on the edge, you can encounter it, but there is a good chance that it'll break your chain after getting the shiny. So if you want only one shiny of Shinx, for example, which is the one we're going for, then by all means go for an edge patch that has a shiny patch on it. If you, however, are trying to just get the entire Shinx line shiny, so you want three of them, then I would avoid the edge patches even if they're shiny patches. So as much as that, oh, and there we go. We got a shiny patch already. So there, that was super fast after that. Um, I've actually had him take very long after getting it, but we got the shiny patch already. So this is going to be a Shinx. They don't break your chain unless they're on an edge patch. There's our shiny Shinx. And yeah, that's how you poke your radar chain. Now, um, I say this is kind of a busted shiny hunting method in Generation 4 specifically, because in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, you can't really just keep farming the same Pokemon shiny over and over again. But let's catch this thing. You can't really farm the same Pokemon over and over again because it's not about encountering the same Pokemon to keep your chain going. So we're gonna catch this one. Um, in this game, it is about encountering the same Pokemon over and over again. So as long as you don't get the grassy patch remain silent thing to break your chain, I can just keep going for more shinies. So we can just keep it going. So let's just try to get another one at least. So if you wanna get like the full Shinx line with like the gender differences, cause every evolution stage of Shinx has a gender difference. So you would technically want six. You can just keep doing this. So. Uh, Obviously, we have our chain intact. If this was like Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, there would have been a really high chance that we break our chain regardless. So, but that is not the case in these games, which is why I think this method's kind of uh, really broken in terms of farming shinies. Obviously, it's quite difficult to get to that point, but I mean, obviously, you want to go for the easier Pokemon in general, like Shinx. And it still takes you like almost an hour to get your chain of 40 and who knows how long it'll take to get the shiny patch after that um i got really lucky with that one that's probably like the fastest i've gotten a shiny patch after hitting a chain of 40 but uh yeah we're just doing at, once you hit that chain of 40 just do what i'm doing now and just avoid every patch don't pay attention to them unless they are indeed a shiny patch so even though 1 in 200 odds doesn't seem like that crazy, the fact that you can get upwards of 4 patches at once means if you get 4 patches, it's essentially a 1 in 50 chance you get a shiny patch. Um, obviously in these games, you're not guaranteed to get 4 patches by any means, but in, uh, say like Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, you are guaranteed to get 4 patches every time, so even though it's harder to combo in that, you actually can get a shiny patch way faster if you're really lucky. But I will explain Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl's Poke Radar once we get to that point of the video. So I keep, I keep referring to it because it is different, but uh, very similar. Oh, there we go. We got another shiny patch right here. Now, obviously it's not four away, but it will be a Shinx, so it'll continue our chain. And as long as it's not an edge patch, it should continue the chain. But uh, that one took longer than expected. That one took me about 40 minutes to get. Um, obviously the first one I got pretty lucky. This one I got pretty unlucky with it. So uh, normally it doesn't take that long to find a shiny patch, but to put it into perspective, this entire recording from the start of this entire chain, getting to chain of 40 and two shiny patches only took me an hour and 17 minutes. Now that sounds really bad, but I mean, compare it to say Masuda method in later games, it still takes hours to get shinies doing that. So this one took me just over an hour to get two shinies and we can just continue this chain if we want. However, I'm probably not going to stick around to complete the full line. We're just going to be happy with the two shinks we got. And uh, I want to show an example of what can happen if you try to use an edge patch to continue your chain. Um, I'm not going to encounter any patches on the edge, but I am, however, going to run the radar because obviously the radar runs automatically every time. There's our second shiny shinks, by the way. And we did not get another shiny patch. But essentially what happens is if you try to run on um, an edge patch, I'll make it a little more likely to happen with the corner over here. 
Um, okay, it didn't work that time, but uh, has a... Alright, never mind. I, <laughs> I accidentally broke my chain because there's apparently a, an open spot right here. Actually, I think what happened was I went too far away from the patch that I had displayed. But essentially, let me just uh, try to do this one more time. Let's get a Shinx. All right, so we have our chain going. We're not going to worry about it, but let's pretend that we got a really high chain and we're trying to keep it going and we encountered a patch that was on the edge. Um, obviously, we're getting patches here, but we're going to keep using edge patches because there's a very likely chance that the chain breaks. And there we go. That's what can happen when you use an edge patch. You can get the grassy patch remained quiet and it'll just auto break your chain. As you can see, it don't have the chain for Shinx anymore. We had a one chain because I stupidly broke it while trying to give the example earlier. But uh, yeah, that's how you pokey radar combos or chain or whatever you want to call it. Let's actually check out the sh two shiny Shinx we got. Um, Obviously, if you want, you can lead uh, your party with a synchronized Pokemon in order to get a certain nature more likely to appear. And you can go for pretty much any Pokemon that's available in grass, but not the extremely tall grass that you can't ride your bike in. Also, another thing I have not mentioned is that if you get on your bike and try to uh, use up steps that way, then you will definitely break your chain. So let's see these shiny shings. There's both shiny shings. They're both male. I was not synchronizing. This one is a hardy nature, and this one is also a hardy nature, which is kind of funny. But uh, the <laughs> I wasn't using a synchronizer, so obviously all these ones are different, but that's kind of funny that these ones are both hardy nature and male. But uh, there's our two shiny shinks, and we can, you know, evolve one to get closer to completing that line. And if we really wanted to, we could just keep uh, going for more after getting those shiny patches. So, uh, hopefully this all makes sense, but, uh, yeah, that is how you pokey radar chain in diamond, pearl, and platinum. Also in Heart Gold Soul Silver, the guaranteed shiny Gyarados makes a return, although this time it will not affect your shiny rates for breeding, unless of course you get it from a different language game and you can do Masuda method with it. Generation 5. A few things to note about Generation 5. First, this was the first generation to pretty much start adding shiny locks to certain Pokemon, meaning no matter how many times you see or encounter those Pokemon, they will never be shiny. So moving forward, especially in later generation, I would exercise caution when trying to do a specific shiny hunt and always refer to this page on Cerebi that lists every shiny locked Pokemon in every game. I will leave a link to the page in the description. Additionally, Masuda method was buffed in Generation 5 to give 5 additional rolls for a shiny Pokemon instead of the original 4. This makes Masuda method a 1 in 1365 shiny rate, which is slightly better than before, but still not super great compared to later generations. Along with this, starting with this generation, the White Flute no longer increases the encounter rate of Pokemon, so unfortunately, there is no more stacking it with Illuminate to get significantly faster encounters. Black and White do not have any ways to increase your shiny rates outside of Masuda method, but can still be a great game to hunt in using Dark Grass. Dark Grass patches in Unova have a chance of giving you two encounters at once rather than one. Similar to using a partner NPC in Generation 4, only you are not guaranteed two encounters every time. The trade-off is that you can do this anytime there are Dark Grass patches. You can also pair this with an encounter pass power to get really quick encounters. In Black 2 and White 2, a new pass power was introduced called Lucky Power. Initially, it only increases the chance of finding more rare Pokemon in the area it is used, but if you use Lucky Power 3, it also increases your shiny chance. This will make the shiny rate 1 in 4096. Also starting in Black 2 and White 2, the shiny charm was officially introduced. However, you need to complete the full national decks, excluding the mythical Pokemon, in order to obtain it, but if you do, they'll give you two additional shiny rolls. This makes the base odds 1 in 2731 or 1 in 2048 if you have a Lucky Power 3, and the shiny rate with Masuda method gets increased to 1 in 1024. Along with these shiny rate increases, you can also get a few guaranteed shiny Pokemon in Black 2 and White 2. You can get either shiny Dratini in White 2 or shiny Gibble in Black 2 from Alder in Flo- Oh gosh, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong. Flochessi Town, that's what I'm gonna go with and deal with it if it's incorrect. And you can get a shiny Haxorus at the Nature Preserve, which is only accessible after seeing every Pokemon in the Unova decks. 
Generation 6. Not only did Generation 6 raise the base shiny rate from 1 in 8192 to 1 in 4096, 1 in 1365 if you have the shiny charm, which has remained the standard ever since, it is arguably the generation that added the most amount of shiny hunting methods. To start with Pokemon X and Y, the Poke Radar returns. It works nearly identical to the Poke Radar in Gen 4, with the added possibility to get more than four patches of grass to shake at once. However, now there are really slow shaking patches that are decoy patches. Always avoid these at all costs. If you walk into a very subtle shaking patch, you won't even encounter a Pokemon, it'll just break your chain automatically. Along with that, the odds have been slightly adjusted to align with the base shiny rate being adjusted. Another popular method is using the Friend Safari, located in... Oh, gosh. Kil... Kilaudi? Kilodi? I don't... I, I'm just gonna butcher every city name. Located in Kaludi City, the Friend Safari allows you to encounter a set of two or three Pokemon of a certain type based on the people you have added as your friend on your 3DS or 2DS. The more people you add to your friends list, the more kinds of friend safaris you will have access to, giving you more variety of Pokemon to hunt for. You will only be able to encounter two Pokemon until the respective friend whose friend safari you are using beats the Elite Four. After they do this, you have access to a third Pokemon to encounter. These Pokemon are encountered via traditional random encounters, but shiny rates are a lot higher. You will have about a 1 in 820 chance to find a shiny, or a 1 in 586 chance if you're using the shiny charm. Paired with the really quick encounter rates, especially with leading with an Illuminate Pokemon, can result in relatively quick shinies. Next up is one of my favorite methods introduced, Horde Encounters. In X and Y, Horde Encounters, where you get 5 Pokemon at once rather than 1, have a low chance of appearing on certain routes. If they can appear, however, you can use either Honey or the move Sweet Scent to force an encounter with a Horde. In Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, you can encounter hordes pretty much any route, but they will not appear without the use of Sweet Scent or Honey unless you are in the really tall grass. This method does not raise your shiny odds at all, but with being able to encounter 5 Pokemon at once, they essentially make full odds hunting or hunting with the shiny charm much quicker. Another method is chain fishing. Chain fishing can be performed by sitting in the same spot without moving and consecutively reeling in fish. The species you encounter does not matter, so even if you fish different species of Pokemon, as long as they are consecutive, they will have an increased shiny chance. Your chain will break if you move from your fishing spot or fail to reel in a fish, either by reeling in too fast, too slow, or by simply not getting a bite at all. In order to lower your chance of your chain breaking by nothing biting, you can lead your party with a Pokemon with the ability Suction Cups or Sticky Hold. These are the Pokemon that get the ability Suction Cups or Sticky Hold. These abilities greatly decrease your chance of getting nothing to bite. Along with this, if you fish on a tile that is surrounded by walls or other objects, that will also decrease your chances of breaking your chain due to nothing biting. Every time you successfully reel in a fish consecutively, your shiny odds increase, maxing out at a 20 chain to give you about a 1 in 100 shiny chance. Finally, the last method that was added for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire was Dex Nav Chaining. This requires you to use the Dex Nav Search feature on your PokeNav. Once the Dex Nav finds a Pokemon, it will appear on the map, and your goal is to slowly sneak up in order to encounter it. Once you encounter it, you simply need to knock it out to continue your chain. Chain length doesn't matter too much for increasing your shiny rate with the Dex Nav, but it does help to consistently encounter the same Pokemon and raise your search level, so you'll probably want to bring lots of repels and avoid encountering random wild Pokemon that will scare your Dex Nav encounter away and break your chain. Having a higher chain length along with a higher search level for the Pokemon you're looking for work together to raise your shiny odds. The max odds you can get for a Dex Nav can be about a 1 in 476 shiny chance or 1 in 173 with shiny charm, with even some instances resulting in as high as a 1 in 56 chance without charm or a 1 in 46 chance with the charm. All this info on shiny odds of generation 6 I found via Anubis on Twitter who links a table chart of the shiny odds by at Lincoln LM which also includes a calculator for chain fishing and Dex Nav shiny odds. I also want to point out that most of the research for these shiny odds was done by at www.zx and I will link the tweet by Anubis in the description which includes the Twitter accounts of both users along with the link to the shiny odds chart. This chart is also what I'll be referring to for the generation 7 shiny rates. Also do note because of the base shiny rate getting increased to 1 in 4096, Masuda Method also has a shiny rate increase with the base odds being 1 in 683 and 1 in 512 if you have shiny charm. Generation 7. The new method introduced in Sun and Moon was SOS Chaining. The way to perform this method is to encounter a wild Pokemon, weaken the Pokemon without giving it a status condition, 
then use a special item called the Adrenaline Orb. This item increases the chance of a wild Pokemon calling in another Pokemon for help, also allowing it to call more than one Pokemon for help in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. They need to keep knocking out the new Pokemon and keep the chain going by having the original Pokemon continue to call more and more in. Once you get a chain to 11, your shiny odds will increase to 1 in 820 or 1 in 586 if you have the shiny charm. Starting at a chain of 21, the odds will increase to 1 in 456, 1 in 373 with the shiny charm, and at a 30 chain or higher, the odds will be a 1 in 316 or 1 in 274 with the shiny charm. Due to a coding quirk in Sun and Moon, once you get to a 256 chain, your shiny odds will reset and it'll be as if you are starting your chain over from zero again. This was fixed in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, so it is recommended that you attempt SOS hunting in those games. A good strategy for preventing the initial Pokemon from KOing itself and ending the battle would be to have a Pokemon with the move Trick that is holding a Lepa Berry, then using an Executor with the hidden ability Harvest along with it knowing the move Skill Swap. First, use the Pokemon with Trick to give its Lepaberry to the wild Pokemon. Then swap into the Harvest Executor and use the move Skill Swap. This will allow the wild Pokemon to recover its PP and use Harvest to continue regaining the Lepaberry so it'll never use Struggle. The other method introduced in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon was using the Ultra Wormholes. To encounter a Pokemon in an Ultra Wormhole that is not an Ultra Beast or a Legendary, it will have a higher chance to be shiny. The farther you travel in the Ultra Space, along with the amount of rings the wormhole has around it affects the shiny chance, with the highest chance of encountering a shiny being 36%. Here's the equation for how to calculate your shiny odds from Cerebee. I will also leave this page linked in the description. Another thing about these wormhole shinies is that their shiny value is determined upon entering the wormhole, so you can save before encountering it and if it is shiny, it will stay shiny even if you reset. So you can attempt to catch it in any Pokeball you like without having to worry about failing it. In Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, the shiny Pokemon now appear in the overworld, so you do not have to encounter them to check if they are shiny. Now that the Pokemon series is on the Switch, there is no longer a soft reset button combination. The way to soft reset your games now is to simply hit the home button, hit X on the open Pokemon game to close it and confirm it and then re-enter the game. It's a little clunkier this way, but ultimately not too much different in terms of soft resetting compared to previous titles. Along with this, using a lure will increase your shiny chance to 1 in 2048 or 1 in 1024 with the shiny charm. And there's a new method called catch comboing. Successfully catching a Pokemon will start a catch combo, and the more that the species you catch consecutively will increase your shiny chance. These odds will increase at a combo of 11, 21, and max out at a combo of 31, much like SOS chaining in Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. Here's the chart showing you the odds of the catch combo method, including whether or not you have the shiny charm, you're using a lure, and what combo length you're at. However, the boosted shiny chance you get is only for the next spawn of the species of Pokemon you are chaining. Meaning if you do not continue to catch those Pokemon to increase your combo, you will no longer have a raised shiny rate. I have a full breakdown of this method on my channel, so if you want a more in-depth guide, I will leave a card for it on screen now. Generation 8. In Sword and Shield, there is a new method introduced using the special Brilliant Aura Pokemon. What you need to do is catch or KO a certain amount of Pokemon to increase your chances of a brilliant Pokemon of that species to spawn, along with those brilliant Pokemon having a higher shiny chance. After catching or KOing a certain species of Pokemon 100 times, you will have the max chance of a brilliant to spawn at 3%, while your shiny odds will be a 1 in 1024, 1 in 683 with the shiny charm for that species only if the Pokemon is a brilliant Pokemon. After KOing 200, you will have a 1 in 819 chance, or 1 in 585 with shiny charm, for the brilliant Pokemon to be shiny. After 300 KO'd, you will have a 1 in 683 chance, or a 1 in 512 chance with Charm, for the Brilliant Shiny. After 500 KO'd, you will have the Max Shiny chance with a 1 in 585, or a 1 in 455 with the Shiny Charm, for that Brilliant Pokemon to be Shiny. However, since it takes much longer to KO 500 of a certain Pokemon instead of 100 Pokemon, and the fact that your Brilliant Encounter Rate will not increase after the 100 Pokemon are KO'd while only having a slightly different Shiny chance, it is recommended that you KO 100 of a certain species, then after that, only encounter the Brilliant Aura Pokemon of that species. Then also KO those Brilliant Aura Pokemon that you're encountering until you eventually get the max Shiny Rate. Or maybe you get a Shiny before you even reach the 500 KO'd. One more thing I have to stress about this is that these bonuses only apply to Brilliant Aura Pokemon, meaning that it is not worth KOing 100 or 500 of any Pokemon that is only available in Hidden Grass Encounters or as the static encounters like Strong Spawns or the Regis in Crown Tundra. This can only be done with Pokemon that appear in the overworld and can become brilliant. Another recommendation with this method is try to find the best place to hunt for your target. 
As the max encounter rate is only 3% for a brilliant Pokemon, you would want to try to find an area where that Pokemon can be encountered much more frequently and has a higher spawn rate for just any Pokemon in general. For example, the wild area yields way more overworld spawns at once than Route 3 for Galarian Zigzagoon. So in general, you will find more brilliant Galarian Zigzagoon in the wild area than you would on Route 3. Another hunting method to increase your shiny chance in Sword and Shield is only available if you have the Crown Tundra DLC. These are Dynamax Adventures. You can go to the max lair at Slippery Slope and participate in a set of four max raid battles using various rental Pokemon that you pick from the beginning or use after successfully catching one of the raid bosses. The fourth raid is against either a legendary Pokemon or an Ultra Beast, and these special Pokemon can only be obtained once per save file, so if you plan to hunt one of them this way, make sure you never select it and keep it at the end. This method is simple. Battle your way through the four raid battles and catch the Pokemon at the end of them. The catch rate is always 100% in these, so don't worry about failing them. After the adventure is complete, you will get to choose one of the Pokemon you wish to take with you to keep, or none at all if you don't want any of them. These Pokemon only appear shiny when you're choosing to select which one you want to keep, and they have a 1 in 300 chance to be shiny, or 1 in 100 chance if you're using the shiny charm. One more thing I want to explain about shiny hunting in Sword and Shield is I mentioned earlier there's these Pokemon called Wanderer Pokemon, or common term Strong Spawn is what a lot of people use. Um, these Pokemon only spawn once a day, they appear in the overworld like this, they cannot be brilliant, so that's something. But essentially, once they are spawned in on the map like this, they have already been generated, so if I were to like save right in front of him and do soft resets, it's not going to be shiny unless it's shiny the first time. So there's what a lot of people will do is once you get away from them, they like regenerate and they get to completely new values. But what a lot of people do is they will save where it isn't spawned in yet and then simply ride their bike into it until it spawns in and encounter it and then soft reset that way which is a pretty good method, but there is a much faster way to do this that's a lot more consistent and uh, you know saves a lot of time. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do the soft reset method for strong spawns or wanderers, depending on what you call them, how to do it really fast and efficient. So obviously we're loading up this game and what people would do is they would bike into strong spawn again and get another encounter. But there is a faster way to do this. So you wanna make note of where it spawned in, which is about where I was standing and you're gonna want to uh change your date so what can happen is uh with the wandering pokemon is that they only spawn once a day and they also can change what pokemon they are based on the date so we know we want this galade it might not be a galade every day so we're, what we're gonna want to do is change the date to one day back so now it's snowy weather we're gonna encounter this guy and we are gonna run from it. Which, yeah, we should be able to run. We have a level 100 Pikachu. Um, making note of where it spawned in, which is about here, like this area. Try to get as close to where it spawns as possible. But what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna do the time, the raid den time skip exploit. So what this is, essentially you find a near, nearby raid den. It can be one that already has a beam on it, but it is easy. In fact, I actually will do one that has a beam on it because wishing pieces, don't go away until you battle them and defeat them so and this one's pretty close by anyway but uh essentially you can throw a wishing piece it can be any den you can throw a wishing piece in but you need to have an active raid den available and you're gonna want to make sure you're not connected to the internet in sword and shield so don't go to the ycom don't hit connect the internet just go straight up to a raid den and hit invite others and when you invite others and it's searching you then go to your system settings and change the date back to the current date or one day forward, depending on how you're doing this. I like to just go one day back and then change it back to the normal date so that what this does is it tricks the game in thinking a full 24 hours has passed and it changed time normally. So then we're just gonna leave the raid and it's going to change back. As you can see, we got the energy back as if the raid has refreshed the day has changed everything's gets got re-rolled so the game thinks the day passed but since we encountered this galade already it's not gonna re-show up but uh what you're gonna want to do is try to roughly estimate about where it spawned in which i think it's like about here i want to say uh hopefully we just get close enough and then you're just gonna want to save your game
and reset. And then once you load back in, the wandering Pokemon should spawn right on top of you and it'll be guaranteed to be a different generated version of that wanderer every time now. So you don't have to worry about starting far away and biking to it every time. You just reload the game and it should spawn right in. Now, this isn't like this is just standard soft resets, but uh, I figured it's an easier way. And there we go. It spawns in and it's a new one. At this point, you just reset again, rinse and repeat. Um, yes, this is just standard soft resets, but I figured this is a really useful tool if you want to reset for the wandering Pokemon and ensure that they are different every time so you can actually get the shiny. And it's a lot more efficient. I feel like everyone should know about this. So figured I would shed some light on this method uh, just in case because, you know, pretty useful method if you want to do any of the wanderers. There's a lot of cool hunts you can do in Sword and Shield with these wanderers. And we get another encounter for Gallade. So hope hopefully this one helps and yeah that's how you reset for wandering pokemon before we begin with brilliant diamond and shining pearl i have a quick disclaimer the shiny charm is present in this game but does not work properly it does not raise the shiny odds of anything except for the eggs you get from the daycare so if you are thinking about grinding out the entire national decks to get the shiny charm, I wouldn't even bother with it. And if you really want the 1 in 512 odds over the 1 in 683 for Masuda method, then I would recommend just hatching for shinies in Sword and Shield or Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun Ultra Moon instead. It's faster to hatch eggs in those games anyway. In Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, the Poke Radar makes a return. Much like how it works in the originals and in X and Y, you can use it to chain for shiny Pokemon. The odds have been doubled for finding a shiny patch since the original, with the 40 chain giving you about a 1 in 99 chance for a shiny patch. However, even with these higher shiny odds, I believe the Poke Radar in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is much harder to chain than in previous games. This is because originally, if you KO'd Pokemon, you would have a 12% chance to break your chain if you entered a patch 4 tiles away, and if you caught the Pokemon, it would be a 2% chance that your chain would break. Along with this, the way you broke your chain it was if you left the area, turned your game off, or simply encountered a different Pokemon other than the one you were chaining. Meaning that even if you hit the 2%, if you randomly just happened to encounter the Pokemon you were chaining anyway, then your chain would remain intact. But in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, they raised the chances of your chain breaking from 2% after the last Pokemon was caught at a 4 tile away patch, all the way to a whopping 7%, which is quite a significant difference. Along with this, as soon as you start your chain, you will only encounter the Pokemon you are chaining for, and there is nothing you can do to prevent your chain from breaking at the 7% rate. So a higher chance to break your chain, and no way to cheese the system and continue your chain by simply getting lucky with the standard encounter table when quote unquote breaking the chain. The new method introduced in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl was the Diglett method. In the new Grand Underground, there is a mechanic where you can find Diglett in certain corners of the Grand Underground, and when you get near them, they will go away and drop a glowing object. Once you collect 40 of these objects, you will get the Diglett bonus. This allows you to commonly dig up rare statues while mining, but if you enter a room where Pokemon appear, those Pokemon will have double the shiny chance to appear, raising your odds from a 1 in 4096 to a 1 in 2048. One thing to note is that the shiny value of a Pokemon is determined upon entering the room, so make sure you check every Pokemon before leaving, and if your bonus ends before you finish checking, the remaining Pokemon will still have the boosted shiny chance until you leave the room again. This method was intended to be done while you are online in the Grand Underground with other players. That way, everyone can work together to hit the 40 glowing objects really quickly. However, since Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are not the newest games, and with Scarlet and Violet coming out very soon, this method will easily fade into obscurity. Along with this, you only get about 5 minutes with the Diglett bonus to try to get a shiny with the 1 in 2048 odds. So in reality, it's probably more worth it to spend the time that you would be collecting Diglets and simply stick to the 1 in 4096 odds and constantly just check for shiny Pokemon. You would probably hit odds faster anyway. Overall, a very disappointing game to shiny hunt in unless you are a full odds shiny hunter. However, I will say the fact that they made Sweet Scent and Honey have like no animation makes encounters really fast, so it is still kind of fun if you are a full odds hunter. So it does open some opportunities to get some pretty quick shinies if you're lucky because of how ridiculously fast Sweet Scent and Honey is. Another thing I want to mention about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is that if you have a copy of Legends Arceus, whether it's a digital or a physical copy, and have completely filled out the decks in it and have Arceus caught, you can get the Azure Flute in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl and obtain Arceus again. Why is this important? Well, what's great about Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is that nothing is shiny locked, which is the first time this has happened since, I believe, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. 
meaning that this particular Arceus is the only way to hunt for a legitimate shiny Arceus, and you can get the event for it any time, which I think is really cool. Speaking of Pokemon Legends Arceus, Legends Arceus goes back to how Let's Go did shinies and puts them in the overworld. However, unlike Let's Go, Pokemon do not simply despawn and respawn if you get too far away from them or after a certain time limit ends. In order to get more encounters for more chances at shinies, what you need to do is either catch or KO your target, then go to the nearest camp and sleep in a tent for a 12 hour cycle. So if it's the middle of the day, sleep until middle of the night, and if it's the middle of the night, sleep until the middle of the day so on and so forth. After you sleep in a tent for that long, every Pokemon you have caught or KO'd will respawn, giving you extra encounters. The other way to reset the spawns for more encounters is to simply go back to Jubilee Village, then back to where you were hunting again, and this will reset every spawn in the area. It's the easier of the two methods, but you will be much more likely to phase with a shiny you are not hunting for. Doing the tent strategy, you will be almost guaranteed to get your target shiny. In terms of methods, Pokemon Legends Arceus is rather limited, but the shiny odds go through the roof. If you achieve research level 10 for a specific species of Pokemon in your Pokedex, that Pokemon shiny rate will increase from a 1 in 4096 to a 1 in 2048. Additionally, if you get that species of Pokemon to a research perfection by completing every challenge for that species, the shiny odds will be raised to a 1 in 1024. On top of this, the shiny charm got a buff in Legends Arceus, originally only giving two additional rolls for a shiny, it now gives three. So the default rate for the shiny charm will be a 1 in 1024, with research level 10 being a 1 in 819, and the research perfection will be a 1 in 683. Pairing this with shiny Pokemon appearing in the overworld, along with being able to fly around on Hisuian Braviary, you can find some pretty fast shinies. The only way to increase your shiny odds further are for mass outbreaks and massive mass outbreaks. Once you hit a certain point in the story, you will unlock the ability to find mass outbreaks and later on after the main story is completed, you will be able to encounter massive mass outbreaks. These are areas highlighted on your map that feature a specific Pokemon in high quantities and they have higher shiny rates. All you need to do is locate the mass outbreak or massive mass outbreak, head to its location, then catch or KO every Pokemon that appears in it until it tells you the reported Pokemon seems to be gone. Then you can head back to Jubilife and check to see if any other places have outbreaks available and try again. They both work very similar, with the only difference being massive mass outbreaks have slightly lower shiny odds but can result in special Pokemon and even alpha Pokemon having outbreaks, giving you an edge at that alpha shiny you may be looking for. Here are the odds for the mass outbreaks and the massive mass outbreaks, along with all the other shiny rates you can get in Legends Arceus. Huge thank you to Anubis again for creating this graphic, and I would highly encourage everyone to give them a follow. They will probably be the first source to give all the shiny rates for Scarlet and Violet once those games are out. There is also a guaranteed shiny ponytail you can obtain in Pokemon Legends Arceus. All you have to do is find the side quest, a peculiar ponytail, and during that quest it'll give you a shiny ponytail that you can keep. One more thing to mention about Legends Arceus is Sawfree setting for shinies. Because shiny Pokemon appear in the overworld and they're already pre-generated, you cannot Sawfree set for them. However, there is a workaround to this where you can actually Sawfree set for shiny Pokemon, including some shiny alpha Pokemon. In order to do this, you have to have unlocked massive mass outbreaks. All you have to do is go to where an alpha Pokemon appears that you wish to shiny hunt, and have it be in the same area that a massive mass outbreak is currently at. All you have to do is go to the massive mass outbreak, catch or KO every Pokemon in it until it tells you the reported Pokemon seems to be gone, then just save and soft reset your game. Because massive mass outbreaks override the normal spawns in the area, once you soft reset your game and reload it, all of the Pokemon that should have been there that got overrun by the massive mass outbreak will now spawn in, and because you had already saved and they had just now spawned in, you can continue to soft reset for Pokemon until they are shiny. What's really cool about this is that there are many static alpha encounters that are always going to appear that can be overrun by massive mass outbreaks, meaning you can soft reset for certain shiny alpha Pokemon. In the description, I will link a video by SB Coop who goes over the shiny hunting method in more detail. I believe they were the one who figured this method out and they also have a list of every alpha Pokemon you can soft reset for using this method. On top of that, you can also get non-alpha shinies this way because if there are any Pokemon in the area they get overrun by the outbreak, then you can just soft reset for them. It doesn't have to be an alpha Pokemon. Pokemon Go. Last but certainly not least is Pokemon Go. Not the most traditional Pokemon game, but you can get tons of shinies in it and they can be sent into Pokemon Home. 
All you need to do to get shinies in Pokemon Go is simply encounter Pokemon. They work much like Sword and Shield's overworld Pokemon, where they do not show up shiny in the overworld, so you will have to encounter them to check. The base shiny rate in Pokemon Go is about 1 in 512, with certain Pokemon having a medium shiny rate at about a 1 in 125, and even others having the perma boosted shiny rate at 1 in 64. There are many Pokemon like this, and the game is constantly changing and switching up shiny odds, so I cannot list them all here. Along with this is that many Pokemon cannot be shiny yet or are even permanently shiny locked as of now. Every single evolved Pokemon in the wild is shiny locked unless that Pokemon is capable of mega evolving. For example, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle can be shiny as they are base form Pokemon that have their shiny released. And on top of that, Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise can be shiny in the wild because they are capable of mega evolving. However, Ivysaur, Charmeleon, and Wartortle cannot be shiny because they cannot mega evolve and they are not the base forms for the evolution line. It's really weird like that, honestly. Other than that, Niantic likes to release shiny Pokemon one at a time, so certain Pokemon, mainly later gen Pokemon like Gen 5 and up, are not released as shiny yet, but you can still get many shinies in this game. A great source to show what shinies are currently available in Pokemon Go is Leak Duck. I will leave a link to their shiny page in the description. However, that shiny list only shows you what shinies that are possible to obtain, not necessarily which ones you can get specifically in the wild. For example, they do include every evolution, but most evolutions cannot be shiny in the wild. You'll have to first get the base form and then evolve it. The main way you can really farm shinies are from certain paid events and community days. Certain paid events like Safari Zones and GoFest that typically take place in a certain place in the world only have a constant shiny rate at a 1 in 64. GoFest, however, in the recent years also have a global event that you can play anywhere around the world. Community days are even crazier where for the 3 hour time frame that the event takes place, the shiny rate for the featured Pokemon is about 1 in 20. You can easily farm shinies with these community days that usually take place once or sometimes even twice a month with community day classics. The trade off is you only get the one species that's featured at the very high shiny rate. One more thing is that there's a huge misconception about Pokemon Go's shiny rate and how you encounter them. Many people believe that based on the method used to encounter a Pokemon can change its shiny odds, similar to how methods work in main series. This is not the case. The Pokemon shiny rate is based on the species of the Pokemon. Let's say you find a shiny Charmander. Charmander has the 1 in 512 shiny rate and regardless of it being from a raid, an egg hatch, a research task, or in the wild, it will always be the 1 in 512 shiny rate, with very few exceptions like say Shadow Shiny Charmander that has the 1 in 64 shiny rate, and sometimes they do costume Charmanders for specific events that sometimes have higher shiny odds but not always. Pokemon Go is very confusing. The other example would be like Shiny Scyther. Shiny Scyther is always a 1 in 64 shiny rate, and regardless of how you obtain a Scyther, it will always be the 1 in 64 shiny rate. Which makes Scyther actually a very easy shiny to obtain in Pokemon Go, as sometimes they feature it in events very commonly and it always is the boosted shiny rate because that's just what they set for Scyther. Also note that legendary Pokemon who have their shiny released have about a 1 in 20 shiny rate. So the Pokemon that are most worth rating for to get a shiny are without a doubt the legendary Pokemon. Hopefully I have covered everything there is when it comes to shiny hunting. I left out some of the quote unquote methods of shiny hunting that do not raise shiny odds and are typically too difficult to hunt anyway. Example of these are say the curry method in Sword and Shield or Poke Pelago in Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Odds are if you actually wanted to shiny hunt Pokemon these ways, you probably already knew about them anyway. And again, Scarlet and Violet is not in this video because I want to make a separate video on shiny hunting and that once we know exactly how it works. I don't want to spread misinformation just to get the video out as fast as possible. So hopefully you all enjoyed, probably a longer video, I know, but thank you guys for sticking to it till the end. This video was intended so that people can refer to it at any time if they want to tackle a shiny hunt and just figure out how to do a certain method. So if it does help you in any way, please let me know by leaving a like on the video. If you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe and comment below if this helped you or maybe what shinies you've gotten with certain methods or what your favorite shiny is. I always love to hear people's stories with how they found shiny Pokemon, so feel free to comment below your favorite shiny Pokemon you obtained and how you obtained it. And with all that being said, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, ring those notification bells, all that good stuff. Be sure to join the domination and I will see you in the next video.